Everton have been fighting relegation from the Premier League for the last few seasons until this year where it looked like things were going pretty well for them and then of course they've got a 10 points deduction. So today we're going to take over as Everton manager in FM24 and give ourselves five years to try and rebuild this club. We won't be aiming to just stay in the Premier League, we'll be hoping to push all the way for that title. They're a team that have nine English top division awards to their name and plenty of history but of course this season they have got that 10 point deduction and we have replicated that in game. With those 10 minus points to our name, we're predicted to finish 20th in the Premier League table, but we'll be hoping for a lot more than that because within the next few years, I want to start pushing for European football, and we've got some players along the way to help us. Arnat Danjuma is our best player according to the game. He is a lonely from Villarreal. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is going to be massively important for us, but that is providing that he can stay fit. England keeper Jordan Pickford has been at Everton for years now and is a mainstay in the first team. And we've also got the recent signing better with front who is a physical monster at six foot four. And things might look pretty good for the club financially. Yes, we've only got one million quid in the transfer budget, but there's apparently 100 million pounds in the overall balance. But of course, Everton got their points deducted for a reason. They'd lost money year upon year. And you can see we've actually got 850 million pounds of debt hidden under the hood. So it's really not going to be an easy job to take Everton up the league table, but we're going to try and do our best with five seasons here at the club. If you do enjoy the video and you enjoy this kind of content, it would really, really help if you you could smash the like button. YouTube sees that you've done that and then promotes these videos to more people. So if you could, that would be amazing. Subscribe if you haven't already as well as we push for 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. A big portion of you currently watching over 60% aren't subscribed. So if you could do that, again, that would be amazing. Comment down below what rebuild you want to see next. Every rebuild that is done is done based on your suggestions. And of course, if you want to continue to save yourself, we'll be putting the save files from season one through to five over on my Patreon linked in the description where you can come over there, support me as a creator, and in return, you get them save files. And the final thing, you might notice I look a bit different in this video. We have got a mustache growing. That is because it's currently November here in the UK, which is a thing that we do here where you grow your mustache for the length of November. The idea of it is to raise awareness for men's mental health and also men's health in general. So I know it looks bad, but we're doing it for a good reason. And as much as I'd love you to like and subscribe and all that, I'd much prefer if you just take your time after this video to message a friend that you haven't spoke to in a while, speak to them because you never know how much it could help them. So with that being said, we can get on to the football manager. Now Everton had already done their transfer business in real life of course but I still made a few moves even though they were pretty minor to try and help this team out. The first one is our midfielder Andre Gomez. I didn't see much room for him in the team so we've loaned him out to Las Palmas for the season with a £1.4 million fee. Similar case for Michael Keane, a good defender but he wasn't one that I really wanted to build around. We've got better options as you'll see from the transfers that we've bought into the club so he's been loaned out to Genoa and we will get £1 million for that loan. Speaking of loans, we've got a loanee coming in. Kobe Mainu of Manchester United, the 18-year-old midfielder with plenty of promise, is coming in for the season, can play as a number six or a central midfielder with great ability all around and a lot of potential. Hopefully he'll do well enough here that we can keep him around permanently. But our major signing that I've made myself is Valentin Gomez, an Argentinian 20-year-old centre-back, ball-playing defender who can also play left-back and somehow has 15 for penalty taking as well. He's cost us £5 million from the Argentinian division, signing from Velez. He might only be 5 foot 11, but he's coming in as one of our best defenders already and he's someone that I hope to build around. So in season two we'll definitely be able to make more transfers to start making this team our own but this is apparently our best 11 for the first season and even though Sean Dyche isn't here anymore I've decided for this rebuild we're going to leave a little bit of Dyche in the club and go for a 4-4-2. We've got two great strikers in Beto and Calvert-Lewin who I'm hoping can feed off each other. We've got Guy, Ducore in the midfield, Jack Harrison and Dan Juma on the left and the right both of them in on loan for the season. Dwight McNeil is also a great player to have around the club at 23 years of age. Ashley Young at left back at the grand old age of 38. That's someone that we don't want to rely upon long term. Brentfway at the back with Michael Keane, who of course has gone out on loan. And Patterson is our best right back. 21 years of age, a lot of promise. Moved to Everton from the Scottish divisions a while ago. I believe in real life he was injured for a while and didn't get off to the best start in the first team because of that. But we're hoping that we can give him the right opportunities in this save. And with that being said, we're ready to go for season one. We've got a 40,000 capacity stadium, decent facilities, coaching and youth recruitment. But of course, Everton are also moving into a new stadium in a few years time. So we need to make sure we're keeping this club running, getting up the division and also making money from player sales. It won't be easy, but we're going to do our best job. So let's see how we do in season one. 
And despite some poor showings in the cup, this is actually a brilliant start for our Everton team. We have finished in ninth place on 54 points with a 10 point deduction. So if we took that away, we would have 64 points. We'd finish in sixth place. That's above Tottenham and Chelsea, as well as Brentford. And that would be a Europa League spot, which is a brilliant start for a team that was predicted, if you remember, to come 20th. We've got an 18 goal difference. And I think accidentally we have stumbled upon a very good tactic here. I really haven't done much to it. It's just a 4-4-2, getting press preset that I've adjusted slightly in terms of the roles but I haven't changed the instructions at all or the instructions on the individual players but we have had a bonkers first year a ninth place finish is absolutely fantastic for our Everton side and we have got some top players to thank for it firstly Dominic Calvert-Lewin is absolutely broken in football manager being a big physical striker he is really good in the in-game engine he stayed fit for the year at least kind of he played about half the games this season 19 matches but in those 19 he scored 29 goals which is an incredible record goes down as one of the best goal scorers in the Premier League this season just behind Haaland and that was with nowhere near as many matches as Haaland had a great season from Calvert-Lewin on top of that we had some other great performers too Jordan Pickford was great in goal we had Beto and Dan Juma contributing 20 goals between the two of them Tarkovsky was really good at the back too James Garner someone we haven't really looked at either is a player that came in from Manchester United a couple years ago and he has turned into a great option in that central midfield spot but next season our team is already going to have a completely new look to it because we are losing a lot of our stars. Adrissa Guy, Ducore, both of their contracts are expiring at the end of this year and we need to figure out if we're keeping any of them. Dan Juma and Jack Harrison's loans are up. Seamus Coleman, the captain, his contract is about to expire as is Deli Ali's, Ashley Young's and Kobe Mainu, of course, had a good first year on loan here. He played 26 times, 10 starts, got one goal and three assists. So didn't really set the world alight, but you wouldn't expect him to at the age of 18. Next season though, we've got a great budget to run with we've got 50 million pounds of transfer budget and 200k of wage budget and that's before all of those players contracts have expired so we're going to have a completely new look team in season two but we need to find the right players first to make that happen Firstly though, the sales, and we have a big thank you to say to the Saudi Arabian teams this year in the transfer window. I know some people think it's a bit weird how many players they buy in FM, but you only have to look at the recent season's transfer window to see they are serious about bringing over a lot of players to the Saudi divisions. And thankfully, we've got a lot of players that we were willing to sell. The first one was Mason Holgate, who spent the year out at Southampton. He only played four times in the championship, starting once. So to get £10 million for him from Al Quadzia here in the Saudi Arabian division, Divisions, I think is a pretty good deal. Neil Mopai continues to be a Premier League striker somehow. He's moved to Bournemouth this transfer window to be a squad player there for 5.75 million. He's been to Brentford, to Brighton, then to Everton, and now we've moved him on. A really weird signing, I think. Everton needed a goal scorer, and they signed a man that was never really cutting it in the Premier League. But either way, we can forget about him, and we have 5 million extra in the bank. And Michael Keane has left us too, also going to the same Saudi Arabian club, this time though for 3.6 million. Spent the year out at Genoa and actually played quite a lot but didn't really play great so I'm happy to get some cash for a 31 year old who I had no plans for and then we get into the incomings where I think we picked up some great players for the team both regular starters and also players just to give us the extra bit of squad depth obviously we lost Ashley Young in that left back spot so we needed a backup to Mikolenko who is our Ukrainian starter so we picked up Ryan Sessignon the 24 year old Englishman former championship young player of the year with Fulham moved to Tottenham never really did too much we have got him as a free agent after after his contract expired and I think there's still a lot in the tank for him and I think he could be a great player for us and for that fee could really turn out to be a bargain. Speaking of bargains we've got another one here signing the Armenian 24 year old Edward Spurtzian. I'd never heard of this guy but we've picked him up from the Russian divisions from Krasdanar. If you don't know we only sign players that our scouts recommend in these videos and they've obviously seen his great performances over there. A 7.7 .7 average match rate in for the season in Russia with eight assists and three goals. He comes in as a central midfield option who can also play further forward if we ever decide to switch up the tactic and gives us that extra bit of depth and quality in the midfield. We added some more quality though by bringing in Alan Rodriguez who is a Uruguayan 24 year old who can play on the right through the middle and pretty much any way you could want him to. He's a very versatile player with some great technical attributes. Physically he does lack a little bit in terms of a presence. He's only five foot seven, isn't the best in the air and isn't very strong but he is a gifted nimble player in the midfield signing for only 6.25 million from our 
Argentinos juniors out in the Argentinian divisions. We're getting our scouting up. Everton's transfers haven't been great in recent seasons, in my opinion. So I'm trying to really focus on those guys that could really help the side. And I think Alan Rodriguez could definitely do that, but we'll see in a few seasons time. I'll probably end up selling him for pennies and he'll never have played or something. I don't think that will happen with this player though. Elias Yellert here is a Danish 21 year old right back who comes in to compete with Nathan Patterson. And I think he could go further than Patterson could because he's got great ability at only the age of 21 with loads of room to get better. Signing from SC Copenhagen. If he ends up being half as good as a potential suggests he could be, then I think we've got ourselves a top deal here. I wanted to add some extra depth in those left and right areas after Dan Juma and Jack Harrison's loans ended. So we have signed Sergei Pinyev here, who seems extremely pale in his picture, but he is a Russian 19 year old international cap player. He was playing for Lokomotiv Moscow and was doing very well for them. Eight assists and two goals at a very young age. We bought him in. I nearly signed him last season, but we decided to wait a little bit. Valued at 30 million. We've signed him for 10 million. I feel like that represents good business. And that conscious effort to lower the age of the team continues with the signing of Brian Zaragoza, who is a Spanish 23 year old who can play left mid or right mid. A great player in terms of the ability rating right now. Comes in as one of our best. Technically very gifted. Has got a nice cross on him and can dribble past his man whilst being very quick. He's direct. He's five foot five and he is coming in from Granada after a brilliant season in La Liga for a team that is on the up in the Spanish divisions. 12 million pounds was the fee that we paid for him. If he can get a few goals and a few assists in his seasons here, then that will definitely work out to be good value for money. And our last signing is Premier League experience. We signed a lot of young players, but we wanted some depth at centre-back and Joachim Anderson was on a transfer list at Crystal Palace following a relegation to the Championship. We have paid 17.25 million pounds for him. Yes, he wasn't great last year, but on paper, he looks to be a brilliant ball playing defender, 16 passing, 14 vision and 14 technique. At six foot four, he could be an elite talent to add to our ranks. And with all of those signings combined, this is supposedly our best 11 right now with Pickford in goal still. Yellert is our player, as is Anderson, Gomez and Mikolenko is the only remainder in that back line of the current Everton team in real life. Zaragoza is at right mid. We've got Garner and Spurzian in the midfield with McNeil as the left mid and Calvert-Lewin and Beto continue up front, both with heavy interest. We had some offers for Beto this season, but we decided to hang on to him with some great talent on the bench as well, including youngster Amadou Onana, who looks like he's ready to break into that first team. I really feel like we've got a good squad here. We were predicted 20th last year, but that was with a points deduction. Now without that, we're predicted to finish 12th. Obviously we finished 9th last season, so I'd hope we can keep that going, maybe get an 8th, 7th place finish. We're not going to win the league straight away, but I'm hoping in this Everton rebuild, we can slowly build upon our success and make our way up that Premier League table. And it didn't quite happen that way for us. We've actually finished slightly worse off than last year, 53 points. Bear in mind last season, without the points deduction, we would have been on 60 plus. So it's not as good. We have finished 10th behind Newcastle, Villa, and then your usual big six, as well as Brentford. So it's not the biggest surprise in the world. We lost more games than we did last year, won less, and also had a goal difference of zero, which is nowhere near as good as it was. But we did get to the semi-final of the FA Cup, which is much better and would have at least given the Everton fans some to get behind but what I do like is we've got this steady progress we're not being tied into a relegation battle and that was step one really with this Everton team but from here I really want to start moving up the table but let's see which players we've got to get behind to make that happen firstly we have got Beto and Calvert-Lewin both being amazing up front Calvert-Lewin scoring 29 and Beto scoring 20 Pickford continued to do well in the net with Pinyev and Spurtzian being two of our best players this year as well as Zaragoza who hit seven goals in 41 starts Nana has also played a lot more by the looks of it and Ben Godfrey has made his way into the first team doing very well over the course of this season he might even have played a lot first year he didn't really so really he's only just started to get into the team but he's been doing very well for us since he has done I never really would have planned to have him as one of our main centre backs and planned around him but if he keeps playing that well we might have to consider it but overall this team is in a good position eight goals from McNeil as well and we'll be going into next season with 50 million pounds yet again and 74,000 pounds to spend in that way budget. We've also improved our youth recruitment and we have state-of-the-art training facilities which is great and financially if we look at the debts and loans it's going down slowly. It's not crazy good but we are slowly getting some progress but really if we want to start making some cash we need to push into some European football and we need some new players to do that. Before we get into the transfers for season three last time I'll ask you don't worry but if you could smash that like button if you are enjoying and subscribe if you haven't that would be absolutely awesome but let's see who we bought in in this transfer window. 
And it's been a big window this summer. We've sold over £90 million worth of players and bought in £90 million worth as well. So let's get into it. First sale, James Tarkovsky has left the club at the age of 32 to Saudi yet again. He's getting 95 k a week there over at Al Fateh and they have sent us £10 million to take him off our hands, which after only seven starts last year and eight sub appearances, seem like good money. Jared Bramthwaite has moved away to Southampton on a permanent deal for £15 million. Played quite a bit in the first season and I know he has been good in real life for Everton but here in FM it wasn't quite working he got loaned out to Leeds in season two didn't do great there so we sold him for 15 million to the English side little bit of egg on my face on this one I said in the last transfer window that I thought Alan Rodriguez was going to be a great sign in Everton's transfer business have been rubbish in recent years um I kind of got that wrong. We've sold him straight away to Hertha Berlin. Wasn't happy with the amount of starts he got after signing, only three starts. So we sold him to the second division of Germany, got pretty much the money that we paid for him. So it's not the worst deal in the world, but we can say goodbye to him. But unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye to Beto, who has replaced Cristiano Ronaldo as the main striker at Al Nasser out in Saudi Arabia. They have sent us a big £62 million. He wanted to leave. He scored 12 goals last year and 10 in season one in the league, which isn't the best numbers after all. So to get Get about two and a half times the initial investment that Everton paid for him back in this transfer. Kind of made sense to let him go. He wanted to go too. When he got offered 500 grand a week, it was very hard to convince him to stay. So we took that cash and we reinvested it. Firstly, Beto's replacement is going to be Joshua Xerxes. And I think we've done a great bit of business here because he's a very similar player, if not better in some areas. He's still a physical presence. He's 24, so he's younger than Beto. Coming in from the side out in Italy, Bologna, after some good seasons for them, but are Scouts really rated him at 22.5 million, rising to 23.5. It seemed like good business. We got over 60 million for Beto. And instead of just buying an out and out replacement for 60 mil, we can reinvest the rest of that cash into our side. And we did so firstly with a backup goalkeeper, Marcin Bulka. He's a Polish under 21 international joining us from Nice after some good appearances there. Not too much to write home about. He's just a backup goalie. We can't just have two strikers in the team though, in Calvert Lewin and our new man Xerxes. So we have signed Chelsea's Armando Broya on the transfer transfer list for £25 million. You can see why wasn't getting a crack at Chelsea, but he is a striker that fits the mould that we're looking for. Big, physical, able to play in both of those striking areas that we have in the team. The Albanian is a good goal scorer, I believe. There's something in there. But yes, Armando Breuer is here as our third choice striker. A real coup for us though. We have signed England international 27-year-old Ebre Eze heading into his prime from Crystal Palace after a great season in the championship. He was available for £24 million on the transfer list and we just had to snap him up he's got great ability we all know how good he is in real life too and he really adds some talent to that midfield position and we've added some extra bodies at the back as well a player that can play anywhere along the back line it's 21 year old Uruguayan Sebastian Barcelli who joins us from River Plate out in Argentina again we are doing our shopping in these Argentinian divisions 15 million pounds rising to 16 potentially for the six foot defender who's a great tackler but also can progress the ball forward well and has good heading ability with a lot of potential Potential to get better yet valued at now 70 million again I think in most cases we're definitely getting the business right here at Everton and the team is really starting to become our own with a lot of our new players in this team but there's still a lot of the core Everton side contributing in this team as they've been getting better James Garner Onana McNeil for example Calvert-Lewin who's been our best player by far so far Godfrey is still in the team as is Mikalenko and Pickford but they've got a lot of competition now with the likes of Sessignon Patterson Chemiti Pinyev Bocelli Eze Broya and Anderson all on the bench competing we have got a much better team in terms of the depth now and I'm hoping that will mean we can push further in the Premier League and also in the Cups and that certainly turned out to be the case, not in the Cups because we got knocked out in the third round by Sunderland and Brentford respectively, but in the Premier League, we have qualified for the UCL. The Champions League position is ours in fourth spot, finishing above Man City, above Liverpool and above Tottenham. With 69 points, we are only five points away from Chelsea in front and only seven points away, if my maths is correct, from the Premier League title because we did actually have a better goal difference than eventual winners, Manchester United. Drew nine, lost nine, but won 20 matches across 
across the course of the season. And our combination so far of blending together the original Everton squad and our new signings has worked perfectly because it's both of those that have helped us here. The likes of Xerxes and Zaragoza getting 38 goals between them, whilst Calvert-Lewin hit 30 himself and McNeil got 14. Onana and Pinayev doing great as well. Eze with a good first season with five goals from midfield. And overall, everything is just clicking in this Everton team. And I really feel like we're starting to build something. I mean, we're now in a Champions League spot that could go a lot further than just the Champions League. I didn't expect us to be able to win a Premier League title in this rebuild, but with two years left to go, there is the chance to make that happen. In terms of finances, we've been given £50 million to spend and nearly 400000 in the wage budget. And financially, with that qualification for the Champions League, the debts and loans haven't really changed too much just yet. But hopefully, as we get that UCL money in, we can start to knock off some of that transfer debt. Maybe we need to spend less in the transfer windows. I feel like if we do, though, we won't be able to compete at such a high level. So we need to find the right blend of doing that. With a 52,000 capacity, the Bramley Moor Dock Stadium is open for business. We'll be hoping in our first few years here to start to deliver some success to Goodison Park's successor. And there's a good chance that is going to happen because it's been a huge season of change. We had a £90 million in and out window last year. This time we've sold £120 million worth of players and there's over £100 million coming in through the door. Firstly, let's run through some quickly. Yusuf Chimiti never really worked out from here. He's gone to Empoli for 1.9 mil. Angela Larcon is a Spanish player bought in by our director of football early on for 300 grand and we sold him straight away to Alweda for 1.7 mil. Joachim Anderson wanted to leave because he wasn't getting enough starts and you can't blame him with only eight starts last season and 14 appearances in the first season he joined us so he moves on for 3.3 mil we got that transfer wrong but at least in the meantime we qualified for the Champions League Edward Spurzian was a great player for us in our first season continued to do well when called upon but it was time to say goodbye to him for seven and a half million he goes back to the Russian divisions play for Zenit because we've got some replacements for him Nathan Patterson has controversially gone back to the Scottish divisions this time though to join the rivals of his former club Rangers he is now playing for Celtic a 25 million pound transfer move it's profit on what Everton originally paid for him he hasn't been great for us over the years and only started seven times last season the arrival of Yellow a few years ago really spelt the end for him so it's goodbye to Patterson and hello to a big wad of cash and it's an instant turnaround as well for Ebre Eze who has moved to Al Ittihad out in Saudi Arabia on a 650 grand a week contract you could see why he demanded to leave as soon as the offer came in it was a decent offer as well 38 million pounds rising to 47 for a man that cost us 24 gave us a season of decent performances and has now moved on yes sad to see him go because I thought he could be a great player but he's 28 and with a situation Everton are in if we get these kind of offers we have to take them and that was my situation as well with James Garner who has been absolutely fantastic during this rebuild as a midfield option he's a player that I'm sure the Everton fans were absolutely loving working his socks off in that midfield role but a man that you signed for 13 million goes on to play three seasons for you and then gets an offer for 42 and a half rising to 54 mil if someone said 54 mil for James Garner I feel like you kind of have to take it. So off he goes to Al Halal out in Saudi Arabia, 500 grand a week. He's not going to turn that down. And we were smart with our business. Firstly, picking up a free transfer, Lazar Samardzic, a 24-year-old Serbian with eight international appearances and fantastic ability. The idea is the same with the other players. Use him, develop him, sell him on for a big chunk of profit in the future. He's been playing for Udinese and playing exceptionally well in Syria. And that was for a team that wouldn't really be considered one of the major players in his division. So hopefully here at Everton with a bit more freedom he can really come into his own but he's got some competition in midfield because we have signed Lamine Kamara a 22 year old central midfielder coming out of Senegal with 15 international appearances five foot nine a brilliant worker with great passing ability who can also hit a shot and a long shot and just generally is an all-round fantastic option who can play pretty much any role in the midfield to get him for 20 million from Mets I feel like is another top top sign-in with Eze, Garner and Spurt Zian out the door we needed another midfielder to come in and that is going to be Antonio Blanc a 26 year old Spanish international midfielder who is an extremely consistent performer and comes in as a good player for most Premier League sides and hopefully he'll be that for us too can play as a defensive midfielder but mainly is a central midfield option who can pass and works hard in the midfield yes he's not the biggest physically but he is strong coming in for 25 mil from Alaves after some great seasons in La Liga I'm hoping this one will turn out well we didn't stop there though Max Aarons is coming in as our Patterson replacement for 34 and a half million pretty much the money that we 
got for Patterson. He's coming in from Bournemouth after some good years there. A 26-year-old Englishman. I didn't really want to spend that much on a backup right back, but I couldn't find anyone that competed well enough with Yella without being a really poor player. So Aaron's is the one we've gone for. Another one that's a consistent performer who performs well in big games. I feel like he could be a top signing if it works out well. And our new centre-back in defence is Odilon Kosunu, a 25-year-old Ivorian who joins us from Bayer Leverkusen after some good seasons for them, particularly last season where he's really started to step up his game. £40 million is the fee, no additional fees on there. And I think the Ivorian is going to be a top player for us. Our scouts recommended him highly and hopefully that means good things. And going into our penultimate season, here is our team ready to go. Only one transfer window left after this and it is pretty much now a new look Everton side. Pickford is one of the remainers in goal as is Mikalenko, McNeil and also Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Outside of that though, our best 11 is completely changed from what we had at the start. We're predicted eighth this year, which is much better. It's showing our steady progress in the league and hopefully that'll mean good stuff for us in season four. And I don't really know how to feel about this. The league season has gone not as well as it had done before. 58 points is pretty disappointing. Still a 10th place spot, but you will see we've qualified for the Europa Conference League. And that is because we have won the Carabao Cup, our first bit of silverware, beating Aston Villa 3-1 in the final. On top of that, we got to the round of 16 of the Champions League, meaning we made it out of the league phase and not just made it out. We finished second, guys, with eight wins in eight, beating Arsenal, Dortmund, Marseille, and a bunch of other great clubs. I feel like that is amazing and Everton fans would have absolutely loved that. We then went down into the round of 16 straight away of course and we only just got edged out by Dortmund so you know what I feel like this team is definitely going places. We did go quite far in the other competitions so maybe that's why the Premier League didn't go so well and of course we are going to need to slowly add some depth to this squad so we can compete in multiple competitions the way all the big clubs can but we are going into the Conference League in our final season. We've got a Carabao Cup to our name and whilst I don't think we're going to go out there and win the Premier League considering the fact we're slowly starting to lower this net debt. I feel like this has been a good rebuild so far. We're doing a good job. And that's backed up by some of our new signings playing amazingly well with Armando Broya coming into his own, scoring 19 goals, Xerxes getting 18, Samardzic with eight, Zaragoza with seven, McNeil and Calvert-Lewin still getting 41 goals on their own between them. Kamara as well getting nine, Pinyev with five. This team has got goals coming from everywhere and that's what we need to be successful. So heading into our final season, we might just need a few extra changes to take this team to another level. And we did exactly that. In season five, there are no sales. There's only two incomings. It's just to add the extra bit of quality to the team. And we're going to continue to let this team gel after their great performances last year. Yes, the league didn't go well, but we were great in so many other competitions. Miguel Gutierrez is a new left back to complete with Mikalenko and arguably replace him in the first team for 19.25 mil from Girona after some brilliant, brilliant seasons for them across the first and second division. At the age of 26, heading into his prime, I think we've got a top talent. And then we We've added some depth at sense back as well. A guy that I haven't actually heard of. His name is Serdar Sachi. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. He's a Turkish international, 24 years of age, six foot three, fantastic ball playing defender who is physically very imposing to coming in from Braga out in Portugal for 33 million after a brilliant year for him, catching the eyes of our scouts. And with that done, that was all of our transfers done for the season. If we pick our best team without any kind of restrictions, this is the best 11 that we finish with. Pickford remains our goalkeeper. Yellow is at the back with Kosunu, Sachi, Gutierrez, Zaragoza, Blanco, Samardzic, Pinyev, Calvert-Lewin and Zerksky, meaning it's just Calvert-Lewin and Pickford as our final players from that original Everton team still in our best 11. Calvert-Lewin is now 30. He even got a testimonial at the club not too long ago, which goes to show the impact he's had at his time here. You can see the club is in a good place in terms of the facilities and the coaching and financially if we have a look at the debts and loans, it's still pretty much where it was originally. It's actually gone up a little bit now, so it's really hard to get rid of this debt whilst also being successful. If we continue this rebuild for a while, maybe we could start to work on that. But let's be honest, the results on the pitch are all the fans are going to care about right now. And we have been delivering that. So let's see how our new transfers can help us in our fifth and final season. And this has been an odd rebuild because normally if we were starting in the Premier League, you'd expect after five years that we'd win the whole thing. It hasn't gone that way. I'm not going to cheat the results or anything and make it look like we we're doing better than we actually did. But we won a Carabao Cup. We got to the Champions League round of 16 one year with loads of wins. And this season, we delivered a European trophy, winning the Europa Conference League, getting to the fifth round of the FA Cup and the quarterfinal of the Carabao, finishing in eighth spot in the Premier League with 58 points, only three behind Newcastle and the rest of the big 
big six are ahead of us. So we are doing like the best of the rest kind of thing. Outside of the big six, we are up there and we are competing with them as well. 16 wins and 12 losses across the course of the season. That's not too bad with 21 goal difference and we will be in the Europa League next year. So if you're a Patreon member and you want to continue this save, that's what you have to look forward to in season five. But remember, you can take over at any point that you want. But let's take a look at our conference league run and then we will watch that game. We beat Roma 3-2 in the final, knocking out Hearts on the way in a, what, how many goals was that? 12-4 on aggregate. Fantastic from us there. We also beat a team I've never heard of in the quarterfinal. The round of 16, we took on Club Bruges. So we did do very well to win this competition. But I imagine we were going into it as one of the favourites. Let's take a look at this match and see how the game went. Based on the team sheet at the bottom here, it looks like Calvert-Lewin didn't start and he actually didn't come on at all. So it was our new strike force of Xerxes and Broya that took the game by storm. Here is McNeil on the left, playing it through to Xerxes in the third minute. He pulls it across to Broya, who plays it again across to Blanco for a very easy finish at close range but Roma weren't going to let us sit on that lead in the 25th minute they come forward with Bove here he finds Molina at right back is he going to put a cross in I assume he will and he finds Tammy Abraham and after a bit of a scruffy thing after a save from Pickford Roma end up with a goal some questions about offside but it was given and then in the 32nd minute we go forward with Brian I assume that's Brian Zaragoza on the right hand side there a good ball into Broya across the box to Xerxes for Broya's second assist of the game really pairing up well the two strikers there even though Blanco scored the first it was their combination that got us that goal so it's great to see the 4-4-2 working in full flow you don't need any special tactics guys just run a 4-4-2 and you'll get the job done although Maserawi had a bit of a problem with that scoring past Pickford into the top left but then in the 77th minute Brian Zaragoza comes forward he joined us in that first season remember Broya with a great trip over the top to Xerxes who runs a goalkeeper and delivers a European trophy to Everton and outside of a European Cup winners cup it looks like that's the first time Everton have ever won a European trophy so I'm delighted to deliver that to the club I feel like this team is starting to get to the point where they could potentially start competing for that Premier League title we just need to keep improving the depth in the team for sure if you do continue this rebuild you've got 60 million pounds to spend in terms of the debts and loans it's pretty much where it started we've maybe knocked off about 50 to 75 million pounds or so and the club is in a great place but there you go that is Everton rebuilt with a 10 point points deduction I've had great fun with this one but let me know who you want to see rebuilt in the comments next thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye